Hi, Sagittarius. Welcome to Pandora Astrology's monthly horoscope for August of 2021. We are the astrologers of Pandora Astrology. I'm Jamie Kale Miller, and with me is... Hi, I'm Julia Mijas in San Francisco. Yep, and I'm in Berkeley. Now, Sag, this month's horoscope is going to put a lot of focus on the career arena for you as Mercury, Venus, Mars, and the Sun pass through your 10th house. And if questions come up for you about your career, you could get a mission orders reading to find all the answers to those questions. And you'll find a YouTube, a link for that in the YouTube description below. Not a YouTube link. Um, I want to begin by talking about Juno, though. Juno in Sagittarius your sign has been traveling along retrograde in your first house for a couple of months now. And this has really brought up a lot of stuff about relationships for you. And you may be asking yourself, am I the partner that I want to be? And do I have the kind of freedom that I want to have in my relationships? Are my relationships a place for growth or are they a place for stagnation? And if that stuff has been coming up for you, I've got great news. This retrograde period is almost done. It finishes on August 2nd. And for the rest of the month, Juno will continue in its shadow period, moving direct and forward, but very slowly. And so there's going to be plenty of time to pick up the pieces, figure out what your relationships are going to look like going forward. Um, so Julia, I think you've got news. Uh, oh, I want to say that you can find out more about Juno retrograde in our video about it, which is actually back in our June 2021 news playlist on our YouTube channel. Julia, what have you got for Mercury, Venus, and Mars this month for the sedges of the world? Oh, I got some, got a few things for them. Hey, Sag, I'll begin with Mercury. That's the planet that rules the mind. And wherever we have Mercury is where we apply a lot of our mental effort as well as where we can expect increased communication. So Mercury starts the month in the ninth house. The ninth house is the house of travel. It's the house of higher education as well. So your mind could be very, very preoccupied with faraway places. Maybe you're planning a trip with Mercury in here or about to go on one. Um, and and uh, the, the ninth house, since it rules education, it's a great time if you are in school or if you do need to learn something new. Then on August 11th, Mercury enters your 10th house of career. Like Jamie said, we have a lot of 10th house emphasis. So with Mercury going into this house, um, you know, you there may be an increase in the amount of communication that goes on in your career, either with the people that you're working with, maybe with your own clients or customers. And if you do anything Mercury related in your career, again, that might be writing, teaching, teaching, uh, public speaking, even buying and selling are ruled by Mercury. Um, this could be a very productive uh, cycle for you as well. Great transit if you have to do any public speaking, actually, because <clears throat> the 10th house is so public. Then Venus starts the month also in the 10th house, where she's bringing a little luck and harmony there. So you could be getting along really, really well with the people that you work with. You could also, if you do anything public, that could even include having a social media presence. Um, you could get a little bit of luck in, um, in how, how uh, the, the public, in your sort of public reception this month too. Then on August 15th, Venus moves into your 11th house. This is the house of groups and friends. So the, the social tempo in your life might pick up where you're connecting a lot with friends. If you've got a partner, you might enjoy hanging out with them among your friends or the groups in your life. Um, this house also rules networks, so it's a really great time for all the single Sages out there to do some online dating too. Then Mars, the planet of action and activity, is in your 10th house um, all month actually. So with Mars in the 10th house, you could feel very, very driven in your career at the same time. The 10th house can rule authority figures, so there are there is the potential of having some clashes with authority figures in your life, whether that's a boss or teacher or parents, whoever your authority figures are. Um, you know, you can. this can be a very productive cycle um, at work as long as you can kind of have as much control over your own work as possible. It might not be the most team player uh, transit because Mars is kind of the planet of numero uno and likes to do things on its own. Um, but yeah, you can definitely get a lot of work done in this cycle as well. Mm. Yep, very full and busy 10th house. <clears throat> I want to say some things about the moons going on. The first of these is the new moon in Leo. New moons are great times for uh, rebirth, starting over, planting seeds, beginning things, 
This particular one falls in your ninth house of meaning. So you might find that there is uh, a refreshing, a revitalization, a rejuvenation of your sense of meaning in life under this moon, especially because it has some really sweet harmony over here to Chiron. It does have a stressful square to Uranus. So don't be surprised if somebody in your life, maybe you, um, is, uh, is a little bit um, attention seeking under this moon. It happens on August 8th and we're calling this one pride springing from wholeness, not ego, because we always have a choice about how we wanna live these things out. <clears throat> the next thing I wanna tell you about is Uranus, which is right here in your sixth house, um, has been traveling through this house for some time, bringing some radical shifts to your job. Possibly you've had a change of job in the last couple of years, or possibly Uranus is, uh, has appeared in your sixth house uh, recently in your Placidus chart, uh, resulting in some you know, new turmoil, which may result in a new job uh, at some point. But any way you look at it, you're likely to feel it when Uranus turns retrograde. So I want to show you the little red RX symbol is going to appear right there next to Uranus as the month goes on. And boom, there it is. So Uranus turns retrograde on August 19th. <clears throat> and if you are having a Uranus transit this year, you might very well feel this sense of agitation, disruption, nervous energy in your, in your work arena. And uh, if you want to know more about Uranus transits, how to notice them, you know, what do they feel like and how to handle them, we've made a video all about that. And it's in our August 2021 news playlist. You can check it out there. The next thing I want to tell you about is the second moon of the month, which is happening on August 22nd. But the best view of it, I think, from here actually is while uh, we can see that the moon is in Aquarius and really this varies with your time zone. Um, so the moon is in Aquarius, uh, it's hanging out with Jupiter and the sun is in very late Leo. And so this is a very social moon. It's a very uh, warm moon. Uh, we're calling it hot summer night party moon. I think it's a great time for a party except that I think it's important to watch out for potential overindulgence on the part of some party guests. And that's because Jupiter is retrograde and perhaps prone to a little bit of overexpansive bad behavior. So watch out for that. It's happening in your third house. So I suppose that could take the form of an argument, you know, a loud drunken argument at a party perhaps, um, when really maybe what you should do or the person who's arguing should do instead is to go outside gaze up at the big, beautiful full moon and find Jupiter twinkling right next to it. Um, last thing I wanna tell you about is the seasonal shift as the sun leaves the sign of Leo and moves into Virgo, your 10th house, as we've been saying all along. <clears throat> that happens on the 22nd. And um, <clears throat> the sun brings the spotlight of attention wherever it goes. Attention is like sunlight. When you spread it around, then things grow. What you put your attention on grows. And so when you bring your attention to your career this month and pour that life-giving sunlight into it, wonderful growth can happen there. And perhaps you'll shine and be noticed. And wouldn't that be nice? Well, that's the news that we have for you today. Hope you enjoyed it, Sagittarius. Uh, if you did, please uh, share our videos with your friends and family and uh, point them to our horoscopes, which can be found on our YouTube channel and also on our website, pandoraastrology.com, along with the monthly forecast. <clears throat> and, uh, and you can get readings and take classes there as well. And until next time, we'll see you around the cosmos. Bye. Bye-bye.